Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today there's a storm passing over the Netherlands. The storm is called Eunice. And this is a great opportunity to explore the visualization of uh, wind in QGIS. Um, so for this task we are going to download uh, a grip file with wind data. And we're going to visualize it using the mesh styling uh, panel in QGIS and export it to an animated GIF. There might be some sound effects during this uh, video because the storm is passing over at this moment, but that fits nicely the topic of this video. So you need to find a grip file uh, for your study area here. This nice website has um, open data from KNMI, but formatted in a, a format that is better readable uh, by uh, different tools. So also by uh, QGIS. And I'm downloading here the grip file for wind for the Netherlands. And I'll provide the link to this page in the, the description of this video. So let's add the downloaded file to the map canvas. We see here the grip file and when we expand it, we see two data types and we need the mesh format that you can recognize from the icon. We see these nice colors now in the map canvas and we see that the layer has a clock indicating that it's temporal data. If I go to the layer properties, I find here um, the temporal information that is used. I'm also going to change the projection of the project to the Dutch projection. And I want to have a layer indicating the boundary of the country. And I'm going to use this layer from the PDOC services plugin with open data for the Netherlands. I'm going to style the country boundary with a simple line. So just that we don't get lost in all the colors and arrows that we're going to show. The layer styling panel adapts to the mesh data and we can change the settings there. And I want to show the wind speed in uh, colors, but also in arrows. So I check both uh, the contour option and the arrow option, the vector option. And later we'll have a look at the colors, but let's first uh, style the arrows. So it's quite dense with arrows uh, at this moment. So I'm going to check the box to display the arrows on a user grid. And I want to scale the arrow length by the magnitude, so by the wind uh, speed. And I change it to a scale factor of 1. We can also change the color. Let's uh, make it blue. And uh, let's activate the temporal controller. And I see there that it uses already the values from the file, but you can always use the refresh button. And when I use the slider, I see here the colors and the arrows uh, changing. So this uh, already looks quite good. But I find the arrows uh, a bit uh, too uh, overlapping. So I increase the spacing of the grid to uh, 20 pixels here. So it's a bit of trial and error to get the result that you want, but this looks uh, better. Now I would like to add a counter to uh, show the time step that we are looking at and some extra information. So I'm going to uh, add a scratch layer. You can make a fixed layer, of course, but this is just a quick way. Call it time. And I use a point geometry, keep everything as it is. And simply add a point. And then we are going to create a label for that point. And to choose single labels, go to the expression editor. And I want a little title there, Storm uh, Unis, in single quotes, so it's a string. I use that button to concatenate other things and that other button for the next line. And then I concatenate it with uh, the time from the temporal controller. It's a variable and that's the map start time. So when I add that, I see in the preview that it doesn't look very human readable. So I can use the format date function. And in the panel on the right, you can read how to use that. So I'm going to uh, first create the date. So I use the day, the full month, and then the year. And you have to put this in uh, single quotes. And then close it with the bracket. And then in the preview, you can see the result of uh, this formatting. That looks good. I'm going to add another line with the time. Just simply copy the part that I had for the date and replace there 
uh, the part to indicate hours and minutes. It gives a, that the expression is valid because there is a concatenation uh, missing. So I need to add it there. And the preview looks good. Click OK to apply it there. And there I see it. And uh, let's tweak a bit, a bit more. Um, choose another uh, font. Change the color of the font. And make it a bit bigger. Change the placement settings to uh, that it centers. And then I can remove the point because we don't want to see the point. We want just the label. So there it is. But now when I run the temporal controller, the label is not really changing or updating. So I need to also activate the temporal controller for that layer. So click right, go to the layer properties. So accept here the projection and then check dynamic temporal control and choose redraw layer only. Then every time step, the layer will be drawn again using the correct time step. And here we see then the result, which uh, is indeed that it counts the hours. Now I want to uh, have the area in the map canvas that I want to export. So you could do this in several ways, but I always find it easy to just reshape the part of the map canvas so it fits our map and then uh, export everything that is there. Um, and we still miss a few uh, elements. It's good to have a skill bar, so I'm going to use the decorations. I choose skill bar, enable the skill bar, and here you can place it. So I use 10 horizontal and 10 vertical, and there I see in the preview what it is if I click apply. So let's do the same for the legend. There is no decorator for the legend, so we need to um, add a picture. So go to the legend settings, go to customize number format because I want uh, zero decimals. And I want to use the space on the right, so I need a horizontal direction. And uh, that looks good. And I'm going to make a screenshot. And I save this as a PNG. So go back to view and then decorations and I add an image. Enable image, browse to the image. And there you can change uh, some settings like the size and also the horizontal and vertical placements. So let's see where it goes. It's a bit too far in the corner. so. So use 10 and 10, and it's a bit too small. Use 26 millimeters, a little bit too big, make it a bit smaller. Okay, that looks good. And then uh, we are ready to export it as uh, frames for an animation. So make sure that it's at the beginning and it looks as you want. And then use this uh, save button and choose an output directory where it will save the PNG for each frame. It uses by default the map canvas extent and I click save and it will export now all the PNG files. So after the export message comes that it was successful, you go to GIMP. And in GIMP, you choose Open as Layers. Make sure that you have selected all the layers that you want to add and that they are sorted, so by name in this case. And after importing the layers, you go to Filters, Animation, Optimize for GIF. And then you export this whole set to um, a GIF file. So I call it Unis Arrows because later we're going to do the traces. It recognizes the options of the GIF, so you remove the comment, choose as animation, and you can play with this value for the delay between the frames. 
I use uh, 200 here. And this is then the result. Super nice animation. Now let's do the same for uh, styling with traces. That's a different way of styling. So go back to the vector tab. And there I choose traces instead of arrows. And you see it's now rendered. And you can play with uh, the particle count and the maximum tail length. So let's make this uh, 50 millimeters. So that looks good. So we're ready to export this one too in the same way. So let's uh, save it in a new output directory called traces. There it is. So import it to uh, GIMP. Open as layers. Make sure you're in the right folder to have all the traces. And then again go to filters. Animation. Optimize for GIF. And then export the animated GIF. Give it a new name. Remove the comment. Check the box for animation. Change the delay. Export. And here's the result. That looks uh, pretty stormy. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. You can apply this technique with uh, all kinds of mesh data that you can uh, find on the internet. And uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Look forward to see you again next time.